permanent observer mission of the African Union to the United Nations. So it was done especially to have this gathering taking place in May. May is so rest in peace. The only Pan-Africanists are the grand sons and daughters of slaves. I mean it. It's your responsibility. It's your task. We have failed. We still have tribalism. You don't. To erect at the United Nations as a place of provenance, a monument to the victims of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. We have been carrying forward this project together, this noble project. So this is a legacy he left me, and so God, before I leave New York, I hope to see it implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Raymond Wolf. Ambassador Doug Blitton, and now as chair of the African Union Diaspora Task Team, I must also pay respect to the legacy of Dr. Thompson, a member of the high-level council of our Diaspora Task Team. And as such, he kept me very busy while I was secretary because I would receive an email almost every week with detailed suggestions, with visionary uh, uh, ideas as to where do, do, did he see us um, developing into and how can we strengthen the relationship and the contributions of the diaspora toward the sustainable economic development of Africa. He mentioned even main specific to complete the youth position in our diaspora task team, to complete the gender positions in our high level council, and specifically develop what he called a confederation of African states that he envisioned should take place in a future as a prelude to the eventual African uh, United States of Africa. He was part of leaders that are mobilizing the diaspora all over the world to really pay attention and participate and respond to the call of the African Union for us to come an integrated part of the effort to help Africa become owners of their own resources, become in charge of the decision making as to that economic development that is taking place there. Uh, specifically, for example, Nepal has asked us, we are seeing Chinese coming to do business in Africa. We're seeing people from all other regions of the world. We need African diaspora to come and participate in this great effort because this is part of the legacy and we could do a contribution. And as part of that projections, one first project that the African diaspora is developing is a database of the African diaspora organizations and individuals, starting with the greater New York area, but eventually the purpose is to develop it for the whole United States. And African Union is taking initiative throughout the different regions of the world, in Latin and South America, in Asia, in Europe. I invite you to connect with us to give us and to transfer some of your mailing list of African diaspora organizations and individuals because the target is to start throughout this month of May with 10,000 of those references. The idea is to register and in the, on this May, May Africa Month the contributions, the initiative that the diaspora wants to do to Re uh, reflect and convey to African Union that we mean business, that we're serious about what we're doing, and that we'll be working very hard to make a reality the eventual goals of sustainable economic development. To that end, also, we are developing a proposal for what we call a Pan-African Enterprise Development Center, which will have two sub-centers, one in the United States and one in Africa, to help African descendants develop their own businesses, be in charge, develop their skills, and transfer the technology that is doing for us as Africans to really enjoy and, uh, and receive the benefits of the incredible resources that are in Africa. Thank you very much. And now we will hear from Dr. Leonard Jeffries, 
president of World African Diaspora Union, WADU, and he will emphasize both in uh, Ambassador Thompson and uh, on, on, on the uh, ideas that he has contributed internationally in terms of education and African history as a necessary, indispensable part of that education. Hotel family, it is indeed a pleasure for me to be a part of this historic event. And first of all, we're in a official capacity in a African Union, Africa House capacity, so there are protocols. So we want to thank Ambassador Tete Antonio and those others who have allowed us to honor our brother in this special way. We also want to thank those who made this day possible. I know Dr. Falou and others have spent, Omawali, Clay, and others have spent a good deal of their time making sure that this event is a special one. We also are blessed to have the partner of Ambassador Dudley Thompson here. He was able to continue this enormous work that he began so many years ago in the last couple of decades because he had a partner. And even though he may have had difficulty in moving around, there was somebody making sure he moved, making sure he was properly attired with the most significant African traditional dress and that he was ready to take on the world. So we cannot proceed further without acknowledging his partner, his wife, Cecile Thompson. Can we stand and give her no. greatest pleasures was to be able to interact with this great brother, Ambassador Dudley Thompson, and that interaction was made special by his wife. Now, in order for me to get home safely to New Jersey, I'd better acknowledge my wife, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, who is here. What can we do without these wives? <laughs> these wives make it very, very easy for us to do what we do. We did celebrate Mother's Day yesterday, but in the African tradition, every day is Mother's Day. And so we need to expand that understanding that we don't take one day. We acknowledge mother, wives, partners, all days. Now, why are we here? We're here because today is a very special event. It's very special because we have a chance to salute Pan-Africanism. And that's not always easy. At the City College, where I spent 40 years, it is difficult to salute Pan-Africanism. Because the Africans there and the people that are related to us Africans, our cousins, want to define themselves out of Pan-Africanism. In fact, our great brother, Dr. Wade Nobles, gave us an understanding of this as a global phenomenon, that Africans and their cousins everywhere are suffering greatly from a shattered consciousness and a fractured identity. And one of the great missions of Pan-Africanism is to clarify that consciousness and to make sure that we know who we are in terms of identity. We are African peoples. We are African peoples. 
no matter how light, no matter how bright, no matter how straight the hair, we are African peoples. As quiet as it's kept, there's only one human race, and it is African. We don't want to go into that now, but we'll have a seminar to clarify that. But you have some of my students that say, well, Dr. Jeffries, I'm not African. I'm from Jamaica. They're not talking about Jamaica in the Caribbean. They're talking about Jamaica, South Jamaica, over there near Kennedy Airport. <laughs> That's a serious problem of identity. We can be sure that this brother who had roots in Jamaica, Ambassador Dudley Thompson, knew who he was and lived it magnificently for 95 years. This most unusual life needs to be studied. We need to celebrate him. We need to honor him. We need to remember him. We need to study him. You talk about a learning lesson for Dr. Leonard Jeffries Jr. these last few years. I sat at the feet of the greatest, the Dr. John Henry Clarks, the Dr. Benz, some of our great sisters, the Professor Scobies. I thought I was finished. I was ready for the next stage, ancestral stage. But Dudley Thompson said, no. You're a young African warrior under me, and I'm going to take your hand. I'm going to show you the way, and I'm going to lead you into an understanding. And you, brothers and sisters, I cannot do it today, but I'm preparing material to let you know what this brother represents. This century that we just completed was supposed to be the century of the triumph of white supremacy. 1900 and thereafter, up until World War I, the European world had conquered not only our land, our labor, and our resources, but our mind. There was no thought of African liberation in the 1900s, in the early years, when Ambassador Dudley Thompson was born. There was a triumph of white supremacy. They even chased out the black leaders who had obtained positions after the Civil War and Reconstruction. The last leader, a black leader in Congress from North Carolina White, was removed in 1901. By 1915, the European world was at war, not for liberation, but for conquest of the most important turf in the world, which was Africa. 1915 was when our leader, Dr. John Henry Clark, emerged out of the womb. 1916 was when Marcus Garvey was trying to reach and, and produce some pan-African linkages, and he was looking for Booker T. Washington to link up with black America. In 1917, Ambassador Dudley Thompson was born. He was born in this whirlwind of Africans trying to find their way. And he participated over the next 95 years fully in that process. No one, no one among us has had the life that this brother has had. No one among us has touched so much of what we think is important in terms of Pan-African liberation, nation building. No one. So we have to be serious about who he was. We were blessed to have this spirit moving among us, bringing to us the understanding of Marcus Garvey, Clay from Jamaica, bringing to us the understanding of struggle, even the struggle that might mean your death. Do you know the stories that they have of him doing the work that he did? It was not just being a lawyer for Jomo Kenyatta. He risked his life fighting for the Mau Mau movement. We need to study this brother. You need to study a brother who was coming out of the war when he should have been processed away from us. A Royal Air Force pilot. But at that moment when he should have found a special place in the European world is when his great consciousness of Africanness hit him and in his life, into his life came. Not those from the Caribbean, only the Pad Lewis, the Ross McConnons, the C.L.R. James, but also the great leaders of black America, the tallest tree in our forest, Paul Robeson, the greatest mind among black people, W.E.B. Du Bois, the family of Marcus Garvey, these are the people that met with this brother in 1945 at the 5th Pan-African Congress. 
a young man at that Congress who had come to America to get his consciousness clarified was Kwame Nkrumah, destined to be the leader of liberation struggle and nation building in Africa. Jomo Kenyatta, Nandi Azikwe of Nigeria. Can you imagine, this is when the brother was, had the choice of becoming part of the white world or becoming part of African liberation and struggle. And he made that decision. And he kept those relationships going for all those decades. And Kuma had done his work and then he passed. But Dudley Thompson was still doing work. Nation building in Jamaica. At a time when Jamaica had a progressive government that wanted to link up with Cuba. And he had to direct that part of the struggle in Jamaica, linking up with Fidel Castro's Cuba. He also spent time with Julius Nereri and Joe Kenyatta in the formation of their consciousness of nation building. We have to study this brother. And then when he should have relaxed, he continued the great work into the 90s. And at that point, we haven't raised a question that we have to raise, but he symbolizes it. You cannot, African people, speak of reparations. You cannot think of success and pan-Africanism without reparations. In the 90s, after having been a part of the pan-African movement, part of nation building in Jamaica, part of putting constitutions and whatnot together on how we would govern ourselves, in the 90s, he took upon himself the mantle of reparations and with Dr. Abiola of Nigeria in 1993 organized a conference that brought our people from the Caribbean, from America, from all the parts of Africa to raise the question of reparations and prepare a document. I could not go. I had a court case, the biggest court case in America in terms of a professor. Professor Scobie could not go. He was my assistant. But Dudley Thompson took the Albany speech that raised the question of reparations and who we are as African peoples and slavery. He took Scobie's document on reparations in the Caribbean and he made that a part of the official presentations of, of the proceedings of the 1993 Abuja conference that Dr. Abiola uh, was a part of and that Dudley provided the direction. Do you understand what we had in our midst and how blessed we are to have had this brother? And we went to Jamaica when he passed. Cecile was there. You have to study him. He always had a joke or something to him, even when he was getting ready to leave us and join the ancestral realm. He came down from his house. His wife had said, Dudley, 7 o'clock in the morning, you're too early. We're not going to, Dr. Jeffrey's not coming here until later, and we're going over to New Jersey. But he was anxious to continue the work. We had just celebrated his 95th birthday the night before. And the next day, he wasn't sleeping. He was up, ready to go to make a contribution. Cecile and finally got down, brought him down. I was waiting downstairs and brought him. And then she went up to get the luggage. And he's negotiating the last few stairs down to his walker. When he gets down to the walker, now here he is having trouble now. This is going to be the last of his great steps in his great and mighty walk. And he's looking at the left foot and it's not going nowhere. In the African tradition, you step off on the left foot for great things. He's trying to get that left foot out of the way. So he says to the left foot, left foot, you've got to move and get out of the way so the right foot can take his position. And at the same time, he was asking me, uh, Dr. J, don't let me fall, because his walker was beginning to move away. And I did call a white fellow who helped to stabilize the walker, and then uh, an Asian fellow or a Latino fellow helped us get him in the, into the car. But at that point, he began to make his serious move toward the ancestral realm. And Cecile was on one side saying, Dudley, don't leave. I'm on the other side saying, you can't leave me here. But he was making his transition. Even to the end, he was thinking about struggle. Even to the end, he was leaving us. When he said, Len Jeffries, don't let me fall, that was 
Don't let the legacy fall. That wasn't for me. That was for all of us. Don't let this legacy fall. So as President of Wadu that I've inherited since he left us, we have to dedicate this year to Dudley Thompson. This year is the year of Dudley Thompson, where we can study his life, his interrelationship with our peoples. We also need to dedicate, as the Wadu executive gets together, a special annual award to Dudley Thompson to go for Pan-Africanists and he should be the first to be receiving the award. These are the things we have to do to keep this legacy alive. You have to understand what a blessing you had. You had in one package the voice and Kuma, Padmore, Ross McConnell, Kama Kinjana, Nereri, you had in one package our grace in America that he interacted with. You had in one package a nation building uh, brother who understood what it was to really make decisions that might affect your life and the life of your people. You had a brilliant law of mind, not a lawyer who was going to destroy our people, but using the law to liberate our people. This is a life of extraordinary proportions. And we've got to say to our people, you need to study Dudley Thompson. Fortunately, he wasn't going to wait for us. His books have already been written. This is one, Cecile, from, from Kingston to Kenya, where he talks about his relationship with the And it's a personal relationship. He also has a manuscript that follows this. It deals with his last few years. And he's asked his daughter, who is a professor, Margaret, to work on that volume just as she worked on this one. And he sent me an email that Margaret will do the preface. One of my great brothers in Jamaica will do an introduction. And Len Jeffries, I want you to do the afterword. What this great and mighty walk was for the last 10 or so years, 15 years, where he was at the inauguration of the most significant image that we have as African peoples. This is the image conceived in the early 2000s as we were conceiving Wadu, the President Wad of Senegal was conceiving an image that would reverberate throughout the African world. Why? Because whoever controls the images controls the self-esteem, the self-respect, and the self-development. Whoever controls the images controls your mind and your action. And we have images that we don't control. The Statue of Liberty images. The images of Washington monuments stolen from the African tradition. He wanted to create an image that was not a war memorial like we have in, in uh, Viola and others. And I have been to that war memorial in Zimbabwe. It's not a memorial to, to, to a deity such as the uh, statue of Jesus overlooking Rio de Janeiro. This is a memorial to a people, the only one of its kind, to the future of a people, to the renaissance and rebirth of a people. And there at the center is a Dudley Thompson, a powerful black man, not showing the world his behind, but showing the world his mind. That's right, that's right. And standing next to him is his rock. And as I said, Ambassador Dudley Thompson could not go anywhere without his rock. And that was the seal in the last great and mighty walk. He had a, a wife who produced his children. He has five youngsters. Am I correct, Cecile? Five or four? Five. And so he is a, not only an example of our struggle, our mastery of the European world, our Africanization, he's the master of a family, maintaining and sustaining it. His rock was the woman that he had as his partner. And there's an example of it. And why did he have this family unit? Because the future is with the child and the children. 
And so the Michael School, we have decided as well do, to bond with the Michael School where he got his education. And we will be putting a library of a thousand books, computers and whatnot in his name, museum and art archives on what he was all about in Jamaica itself. But we will also make sure that he has a place in the monuments that are in this monument in Senegal because the base of it is an exhibition hall. It's not just a monument, it's an ex exhibition hall. And the history of our people from the beginning of times to the current is there. And so this symbol is the symbol of the African Renaissance movement. And since the Pan-African movement and the African Union have agreed that 2017 will be the coming together of the United States of Africa, 2017 will also be the 100th anniversary of Ambassador Dudley Thompson. So there are significant movements that we are about. So we're here to honor, we're here to celebrate, we're here to rededicate, we're here to empower ourselves for the great task of defining who we are and what our mission is going to be and making sure that there is a union of African peoples that's global to meet the global union of the East and West and Europe that has come together, of the various aspects of the Af Arab world that have come together, of the Asian world at all stripes that have come together. These mega family global units are going to move on the most important real estate in the world, and that is Africa, unless the African global family empowers itself, rises up, and in the spirit of Ambassador W. Thompson, helps to build a meaningful future that will unify us all. Thank you very much. And convey to African Union that we mean business, that we're serious about what we're doing, and that we'll be working very hard to make a reality the eventual goals of sustainable economic development. In 1915, the European world was at war, not for liberation, but for conquest of the most important turf in the world, which was Africa.